All right, so our next unit is storms. Um, storms are a violent disturbance in the atmosphere. They often involve a sudden change in air pressure. Uh, when we talk about storms, we'll talk about summer storms and also winter storms. Uh, winter storms typically occur um, in the northern part of the United States. They typically will have a large amount of snowfall with them. Uh, as we get further to the southern part of the United States, typically they don't get the snowfall that we get. Um, all year round, most pre precipitation in clouds begins as snow. Uh, however, as it falls closer and closer to the ground level, uh, it will warm up as the ground level is warmer, and that precipitation will eventually turn over to rain. So in order for snow to occur, we have to have precipitation that stays cold as it gets to ground level. Lake effect snow. Uh, lake effect snow occurs when a cold, dry air mass moves across the warmer water of some of our Great Lakes. Uh, for example, Lake Michigan. You'll notice there uh, with Lake Michigan, there's a large amount of area that is affected by lake effect snow. Um, lake Michigan, I it tends to have lake effect snow just simply because during the winter months, the water in Lake Michigan is much warmer than the air that comes down from the northern parts of Canada. As it comes down, it, uh, it evaporates quite a bit of water out of that warm, air, uh, warm water mass. And then as that air mass continues over top of our state, over top of the land, the precipitation comes out of that air mass. So what cities in here do you think might end up with lake effect snow? Chicago probably isn't going to have too much lake effect snow because Chicago is on the western side of Lake Michigan. Most of our air masses that come in come out of the west and move to the east. As they come out of the west and move to the east, they affect those things that are on the eastern side, those cities that are on the eastern side of bodies of water. So Trey, what do you think? Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo, New York is definitely one of them. Max, what about you? Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio is going to get some lake effect snow. Is good? Yeah, Erie, Pennsylvania gets quite a bit of lake effect snow. And then also Rochester, New York. So each of those are going to get a large amount of lake effect snow. So what about Middleton, Michigan? Do you think Middleton, Michigan uh, is going to get a large amount of lake effect snow? Probably not. Middleton, Michigan's probably not going to get a lot of lake effect snow because be by the time the air mass moves over top of the center part of our state, most of the moisture that it's absorbed from Lake is Michigan is already fallen out in the form of snow. Okay. Now, does, th does that mean that this is always the case? No. Well, there are possibilities if you've got uh, updrafts of wind that are keeping snow up in the atmosphere longer as that air mass moves further into the center, par center part of the state. There is a possibility it will have. Uh, that it'll end up with some lake effect snow towards the center part of the state. So thunderstorms form when a small storm, usually accompanied, accompanied with heavy precipitation and thunder and lightning, has warm, humid air rising, and then we also get some cool air sinking. This all occurs inside of a cumulonimbus cloud, so warm, humid air rises. That warm, humid air that is rising, what happens to warm, humid air as it rises? What happens to that air itself? What happens when air rises? It gets colder. What happens as air cools, especially if it has moisture in it? Okay, it does eventually sink as it gets cooler and cooler, but what happens to the moisture, moisture as it rises? Yeah, condensation occurs. So as that warm, humid air rises, condensation occurs. And so we get this, um, this top part of a cumulonimbus cloud. The top part ends up with that big anvil type shape because more and more condensation is occurring higher up you get. As that air cools, 
it has to sink back down so cool air moves downward. So you got updrafts and downdrafts. Um, lightning and thunder are associated with uh, thunderstorms. Uh, lightning is a sudden spark or electrical discharge. It occurs when um, that discharge occurs either within a cloud, it could be a discharge occurs from one cloud to another, or it could be a discharge that occurs from a cloud to the ground. Thunder is due to the rapid expansion of air. So as lightning hits the air inside of a cloud or inside of a thunderstorm, the water rapidly expands, the air rapidly expands. The rapid expansion is what you hear as a thunder, um, as the thunder sound, the loud clap of thunder. Um, they can cause damage due to flash flooding. Uh, flash fl flooding is usually um, due to the rising of streams, uh, usually a really quick rising of streams uh, as more and more precipitation is added to it. Hurricanes. Hurricanes are tropical cyclones that occur when we have uh, wind speeds of 119 kilometers per hour or higher. Typically, hurricanes are developed due to um, air over the northern Atlantic, excuse me, the central Atlantic area, um, usually near the equator. Uh, and so these, these um, air masses that form over that central part of the Atlantic usually are very warm they form near the equator. Uh, usually they develop where a low pressure region is. This low pressure region is called the tropical disturbance. And a hurricane draws its energy from that warm, humid air that is created from the warm moisture of the ocean. As the air rises and forms clouds, more air is drawn into the system. Inside the storm are bands of very high winds and heavy rains. Uh, winds spiral inward towards the center of the lowest pressure at the center. So in this picture, we see a hurricane. Max, where would I find the eye of this hurricane? Yeah, right in the very center. And the eye is an area of extreme low pressure. That extreme low pressure usually has sinking air. The sinking air causes there to be very weak winds. Um, you'll notice over on the left hand side in the blank, um, it should say strong there. In the center we have some weak winds because all of the wind, all the air is sinking down on top of whatever's underneath it. And then out towards the outer rims of that hurricane we also have strong winds. Yes sir? All right, so Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina hit the United States a couple of years ago. Hurricane Katrina, a lot of storm forecasters were trying to figure out where it was gonna hit landfall. They were trying to figure out what direction, what is the storm path of this storm. So inside of your book, you see that there is a, this same picture. With this picture, draw a couple of areas that you think this storm may continue on to. If you are a weather forecaster and you're looking at the track of this hurricane as it's coming towards Louisiana, what are some different possibilities for the direction it might go? Okay, it might go up to Texas, and that's what I put on the first one for mine too. So it might go over towards Texas. Okay, it could spin backwards and go back towards uh, Florida or over towards Georgia. Okay, it could. It could continue on and go down here towards Mexico. Very true. It could continue down there. And probably there would have to be a very large high pressure system in this area to get it to do that. Or it could just simply go right straight up through Louisiana. And that's where I had the second one 
And then the third one I have here kind of talks about uh, what Mr. Betts had mentioned about it kind of spinning back towards Florida or back towards um, the southern, the southeastern United States. Um, hurricanes can last for a week or more. During that period of time, they can travel thousands of kilometers. They are typically steered by easterly trade winds towards the Caribbean islands and into the southwest or the southeastern United States. Most of the damage that occurs from hurricanes is due to the storm surge. Now, that's not to say that high winds don't cause a large amount of damage, but the storm surge is basically a rising of sea level where that hurricane hits land. And so it takes a very large dome of water that kind of sweeps across the coastline, um, causes a large amount of flooding and damage due to water. Tornadoes. A tornado is a rapidly whirling funnel-shaped cloud that reaches down from um, a thunderstorm and it touches Earth's surface. Intense tornadoes can have wind speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. They most commonly develop in cumulonimbus clouds, so the very same clouds that develop thunderstorms are the ones that develop into or can develop into tornadoes. Uh, tornado Alley is the section of the United States where most tornadoes occur, where they're most frequent. It's kind of the central part of the United States. And we'll look at the next picture here, and the next picture here will show um, the, the areas where the majority of tornadoes occur. So about 1,200 tornadoes occur in the United States every year. The area in the Great Plains and through the central part of the United States, this area is known as Tornado, tornado Alley. And the reason it is so uh, is so predominant, or tornadoes are so predominant in this area, is because we have warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico that comes up, but we also have cool, dry air from Canada sinking down. And the Rocky Mountains kind of help this, because the Rocky Mountains run north and south right here. So instead of air masses moving opposite directions from one another, they really just simply collide and they move together. So where those two air masses are colliding with one another, Lots of condensation is occurring, wind speeds increase, all that kind of stuff. Um, tornado damage is measured on the EFS scale. There are five different, scratch that, six different ways in which we would measure damage. Um, an EF zero is where branches are broken off the trees. Basically the same thing a thunderstorm can do. Um, EF1, mobile homes can be overturned. EF2, we get trees that are uprooted. EF3, roofs and walls are torn down. EF4, houses are leveled. Uh, EF5, houses are carried away. So we get into the whole Wizard of Oz thing with, uh, with EF5s. Houses are picked up and basically moved long distances. So staying safe. Winter storm safety. Blowing wind causes the majority of problems. It causes visibility problems. Um, when you are when you are in blowing cold wind, your body temperature is going to quickly decrease. So you have to make sure that with winter storms, we are staying out of that wind. We need to find shelter from the wind. We need to find shelter from the cold. Thunderstorm safety. Stay indoors. Stay away from lightning. Um, avoid touching telephone, electrical appliances, or plumbing fixtures. During thunderstorms, avoid places where lightning may strike. Also avoid objects that can conduct electricity. Things like telephone poles and trees, those are always objects that can conduct electricity because they're usually much higher than the ground around them. Um, get in low areas. Crouch with your head down. And then if you're swimming or boating, vacate the water. Don't stay in the water if you're swimming or boating. Hurricane safety. Um, tracks of hurricanes are becoming, the prediction of hurricanes are becoming better and better. So people typically receive warnings well in advance. If you hear a hurricane watch, a 
hurricane watch indicates that a hurricane is possible within the next 36 hours. You should prepare to evacuate. Um, a hurricane warning means that hurricane conditions are expected in the next 24 hours. And then tornado safety. A tornado watch is announced if a tornado is possible, if conditions are possible for a tornado to occur. A tornado warning is an announcement that a tornado has been seen or it's indicated on, on radar. The safest place in a tornado is a storm shelter or a basement. If a basement is not available, move to the middle of a house, uh, the middle floor of a house, the center of a house. Stay away from windows and doors. Lie under a sturdy piece of furniture. Um, if you're outdoors, lie flat in a ditch.